Hi there, I'm Jessica Rose. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to sell your jewelry without being salesy. Great, so today we're talking about selling with integrity. So nobody likes that feeling of trying to sell your jewelry and we feel all salesy, for want of a better word. And it's just, it's just horrible. We sort of, we've put all of our love and care into creating this wonderful product. Then there's someone in front of us. Sometimes we freeze up. Sometimes we think we need to turn into a car salesman and vlog it or whatever. Um, and I think a lot of us share that same fear around that scenario. How do we sell with integrity, with authenticity, by being ourselves, showing our products on offer and serving the customer? So I think the key to begin with is really to take the pressure off. You don't have to sell your jewelry at every interaction you have with someone. Of course, it's great to engage with people, encourage them, especially when you're in a marketing situation like a craft fair or an event. We want to talk to people and educate them, but don't do the hard sell. And I know that most jewelers, we don't anyway. It's much more about educating, inspiring, and telling people about things that they're interested in. So the first thing I would say is take the pressure off and be yourself. So everyone has a naturally different selling style. You might see some people sell with, you know, they're great at speaking, they're very engaging, and you might look over at them in a craft room and think, that's just not me. You know, I'm more relaxed, I'm more calm, perhaps I'm more shy, and that's okay. It's absolutely okay to be yourself. As a customer, we can tell when someone is comfortable with themselves, comfortable with talking about your jewel, their jewellery and just comfortable in that situation and that makes the customer more comfortable. We all feel better about the whole thing when we're ourselves. So don't be afraid to be yourself. The next thing is to take the focus off you. Think about your customers. So this is something that I'm always saying, probably sound like a broken record, but it's always all about your customers. So what are their desires? What are their problems? Are they trying to find a piece of jewelry that they can't find anywhere else? Are they trying to do something up and they've been trying to do it up for ages with a really difficult clasp and you have a piece that's really easy and simple to do up? Are they trying to find a gift for someone who is impossible to buy for? Or are they looking for something unique to go with an outfit and they just can't find something anywhere else? Think of yourself as a problem solver. You're trying to solve problems for your customers and give them value with what you're offering. Think about their desires as well. So sometimes we know we've got a problem, we want to solve it. Sometimes we have no idea, but we just want to be drawn to something. Whether it's beautiful gemstones that catch our eye and we think, oh my gosh, I would love to have that. Whether it's a lovely design, a piece of silver that we've been had our eye on for ages and we found a really unique version of it. So it's desires and problems, not products. So the products are the results that people buy, but people don't really look to buy products. They look to solve their problems and their desires. Another thing that helps me to take the pressure off when I'm doing sales, and this really helps online, is to let your images do the talking. So if you have beautiful images, lifestyle images of your jewelry in a process, and also images of your work on a white background, all different options to show your customer, images on a model is a really nice way to show off how your work would look on somebody. And we see the model when we think, wow, that looks really gorgeous, and we want that for ourselves. So having those show-stopping images will sell your jewelry for you. Have you ever been on a website and seen something that you want so much, you're not even interested in reading the product description? Like you'll have a quick look before you buy it, but it's not what you're interested because you know from that image, that's what you want. That's what we wanna do. And that can work in a sales interaction face-to-face -face as well, because if we have our images behind us in a stand, people are drawn to those. Our images show what we have on offer, how it can fit within their lives and how it's inspiring. That way you've already done half of the selling before they even get to your stand. The next point is that selling is a skill. 
we often expect ourselves just to be able to know how to sell. And that can make us really scared and pressured because we've never been taught how to sell. We're jewelers, it's not our necessarily our key focus. So think of it as a skill that you will learn as you go. You might make some mistakes. You might say some things to customers that you think, oh, that really wasn't authentic or that really wasn't me. Don't beat yourself up about that, that's normal. When you're learning anything new, you're gonna make mistakes. The key point is to learn from it See the things that don't feel right and adapt as you go. Another thing I like to do with selling is to share a story. So if somebody asks me something about my jewellery, I like to share with them where I got the materials from and what my making process is. That really takes the pressure off products, selling, anything sort of sleazy or slimy like that and gets into the connection between the two of us. That way, even if they walk away and they're not interested, perhaps they've learned something about jewelry making and how I go about doing that that makes them feel a little bit more engaged with what I'm about. The next point is to listen. Now, it may sound obvious, but a key part of selling is listening to your customer. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been sold to and you just want to tell the person who's selling you something that you're worried about or concerned about or you want to ask them a question, but you can't because they're so excited about selling you the product, you can't get a word in. If you're one of those people who are very good at talking, <laughs> then try to be conscious and allow some space for the customer to talk, to tell you about what they're interested in and have some time to listen as well. I often forget about this one, but it's such an important part of the sales process. Another thing I like to do, and again, this is very useful for both online and offline, is to share social proof. So social proof is when we can show people that other people are interested in what we're doing. And what that does is it creates more desire, it creates more interest because people go to the place where other people have been to. That's why we have recommendations, we have Google reviews, Facebook reviews, Etsy reviews, all of these really help. You're much more likely to buy from an Etsy shop that has 100 reviews than just one because it's that social proof that we're talking about. So share your social proof, share it on your website. If you don't have a feedback app on your website, I encourage you to have a look around and try and find one. There are tons out there these days where you can ask for feedback and post it on there. Testimonials, so Etsy has this built in and so do a lot of the other third party platforms. And if you're selling at a fair or event, why not have a little space or a little book or a little stand that shows some testimonials and some customers? And if you've been featured in magazines, some clippings of that. All of this really helps to build credibility around what you're selling. So we're getting to the stage where customers are drawn to us instead of us feeling we have to go out there and try and do a sale on them. Share about yourself. So when you're in that interaction with customers, whether online or offline, do share information about you. That's how we connect with each other. And once we've connected, we know that people buy from those they know, like and trust. So that's what we're trying to do with every interaction is build that genuine connection with our customers. Your jewellery helps people. So this is something that is really good to get your head around is that your jewellery helps people. It provides a valuable service. Imagine if there was no jewellery in the world. I know, hard to imagine. It wouldn't be such a good world. So you're actually providing a service by offering what you do. Believe in your product. If you believe in your product, that comes across in your sales techniques, in your pitches, and people can see your excitement and they become excited by it as well. So share your excitement about jewellery. Don't hide it away. Share what you enjoy about it, what you love. Talk about, you know, if you're a magpie, talk about that. You and your customers might be able to relate to that. You both love shiny things, for example. Now we know that for most sales to take place in any industry, there are about seven different connection points that your customer needs to go through. So the first time they see you is unlikely they're just going to buy straight away. It does happen, but we're not gonna rely on that. 
So if somebody sees you at an event, a craft fair, or comes to visit your shop online, we don't expect them to buy straight away. We're trying to engage with them, tell them more about us, learn more about them, and we know that over time, that's when they become warm to what we have to offer, and that's when they become interested and actually make the purchase. So there are lots of ways to sell without being salesy. You can 100% do it. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Be yourself and learn as you go along. Believe in your products, be authentic, and your customers will really respond to that too. Now, if you would like to grow your jewelry business, I would love to help you with that. Check out our other YouTube videos for more business support and making advice. And for more in-depth courses, head on over to the site at jewelersacademy.com. And I would love to connect with you on social media. Do come and find us over at Jewelers Academy on Instagram and all the other platforms. Wishing you a wonderful rest of the day and I hope to see you on another video very soon. Alrighty, bye for now.